Welcome to A Well Cared For Human, the podcast that tries to convince you that you are 100% normal and an even better than okay example of the human species, despite the fact that sometimes we feel like the craziest, most incapable, or worthless creatures on the face of this planet. I'm Corey, an author, a creative, and the host of the show. Whatever you're bringing to the table today, I hope this episode proves to be a dose of inspiration for you on your quest to become a well-cared-for human. You can find the episode show notes, your free wellness blueprint, and more at awellcaredforhuman.com. And as always, thank you for listening. Hello, humans. It's your host, Corey, and today we're going to talk about kindness and how kindness is often dismissed as weakness. We've all heard that expression. My kindness is often taken for granted. My kindness is taken for weakness. But the truth is, for anyone who has ever tried to practice kindness for even a minute, you quickly realize how difficult kindness can be, how much strength and patience and power it requires to show kindness not only to other people, but to yourself. And for me, my education in kindness is complicated because of my history, of my background, with my family, with my personal experiences. And part of the issue with kindness is receiving kindness. It can be very difficult to receive kindness. If you're used to the people around you being manipulative, being toxic, being exploitative, When someone comes to you and they act like they want to do something for you, that is usually a red flag. (laughs) Even if they say a nice thing to you, you're like, what do you want, buddy? What's going on? What's happening here? It can be really difficult to trust kindness. And so how do we get to a place where we are open to kindness, open to receiving kindness, and that we're comfortable with giving kindness and we don't feel like we will be used or jumped upon or exploited in some way if we dare to be kind and open-hearted to others. So there's a lot of learning there. It can be really hard to discern the different situations and know when kindness is genuine, when it's just a manipulative technique. But I would argue that if it's a manipulative technique, then we are no longer talking about kindness, right? We're talking about manipulation. So how do we identify genuine kindness? How do we receive kindness without feeling triggered or belittled or afraid of outcomes? How do we give kindness without our own traumas getting involved? Probably the most generous person I knew growing up was my mother. Genuinely generous. She would give you the last dollar in her wallet if you asked for it. If you needed something, she would give it to you. She definitely wanted to help people. She cared about people. She really sympathized and worried about people, and she wanted to help them if she could. The only problem with that, the cautionary tale present in my mother's form of kindness, is that she often did it at the expense of herself. So she would give something even if she needed it. Like if she genuinely would suffer without it, she would still give it away. And she often put herself in dangerous and difficult situations because her kindness did not have any sense of healthy boundary or self-love or protection to it. So that's one form of kindness that can be detrimental to ourselves. And then with my father, his kindness was the opposite. It was done with expectation. When my father was kind to you, it was either because he wanted to prove something to himself or the people around him, or he wanted you to be beholden to him in some way. He was expecting something in return. Because if you did not give back, if you did not meet the condition, then you were a taker. He loved to call me a taker growing up. Corey, you need to be a giver, not a taker. I didn't even know what that meant. Only he knew what that meant. I was only a child. And so if I didn't even know what that meant, clearly only one of us was doing anything with the anticipation of being a taker. (laughs) Only one of us was being a taker in this situation. And so how do you give, how do you be kind to people without needing that reciprocity from them? Because yes, it's great to have people give back. It's good to have balanced relationships where you give as much as you receive. But it can't be done from this toxic place of expectation of I'm only giving you this to get something back. That's a very different flavor than a healthy relationship in which you just look after each other, you take care of each other, you have each other's backs. 
that's a very different energy than I'm only being nice to you because I expect something in return from you later. So that was kindness as he understood it, in contrast to kindness as my mother understood it, which was without limitation, without boundary. And so for a long time, these were the forms of kindness that I knew, is that I had to give, 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 even if it was at the expense of myself. And I had to receive my father's kindness, but accept, you know, it was more like a bill that was going to come due that I was going to have to pay later. And this was problematic because it meant that I did not know how to give while also taking care of myself. And I did not know how to receive without feeling like I owed somebody. And that's not a great place to be when it comes to healthy forms of kindness. Kindness truly is giving without expectation and receiving without guilt. You don't owe anyone anything. The act of them giving something to you, that is the gift. That is what they get out of the situation. And if you have a good relationship with this person, you will naturally give back to them because that generosity will be built between the two of you and it will be steady and a two-way street because you guys have built this relationship. You have this trust and love between you and there's no keeping score. There's no need to keep score because you both feel loved and secured. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships, of course. I'm talking about friendships, any relationship that you have in your life. Now, granted, if you have children, children don't know any of this. So if you're, you know, a parent, you might be giving a lot and your children might be giving back very little, especially depending on their age. But most healthy adult relationships, you should be experiencing a certain level of reciprocity where you feel secure, you feel looked after, you feel cared about. And that way you can openly accept help when you need it and you can give help when they need it. And no one's got a scorecard going between you that you are tallying up who's doing what for who, because that's not real kindness. So two aspects to this. One is, how do we give without giving too much of ourselves? Where is the boundary? Well, that's the magic sauce. Kindness plus boundaries is being able to stand strong in your power. So if I have someone who needs something of me, I ask myself, can I give this without it hurting me, without it compromising me? And if the answer is yes, then I just give it. And I don't expect them to give anything back. I don't expect them to try to make it up to me later somehow. If it was free for me to give, if it was easy for me to give, I give it. And even if emotionally it might not be that easy to give. So for example, maybe I have a minor attachment to an object or something and then I give it to them, like a book, and then they accidentally, I don't know, drop that book in the bathtub and it's ruined. I don't go, oh my gosh, I should have never given it to you and have this terrible reaction. I'm saying, well, I gave it to them and that's what happened and it is what it is. So trying not to add anything to the situation, trying not to let my expectations get involved. If I gave it to you, I gave it to you. And it's because I believe that Energy is meant to flow freely between people. It should not be tallied in any way. And I believe that it will come back to me that what I put out into the universe, what love and affection and care I give to others will be returned to me in one way or another. And having that level of trust and confidence that it is free flowing. So giving what I can, but not at the expense of myself. If I absolutely need my last $20 to pay a bill, I cannot give that to somebody else if they need it, if they ask me for it and they need it. Now I can try to help them in other ways. So let's say a friend asks me, oh my gosh, you know, I ran into trouble. I need this 20 bucks and that's all I have is $20. I can say, I can't give you $20. I don't have it to share, but let me help you with this problem. Let's figure out what we can do. Let's work on this together so you can lend other forms of support. There are many ways to show kindness and solidarity to someone. And if they react badly to your form of kindness, that might be a red flag. That might be them showing the way they're viewing your relationship. Maybe you have been very giving and generous to them and they just expected you to do something. And now when you can't, they react negatively. That's something to note in a kindness situation. But that doesn't mean you should stop giving or that you should be less of a generous person just because one person acted badly. As long as you stick to your moral code of if I can give it, I will, but I'm not going to do it at the expense of myself, then you have nothing to feel bad about. You have nothing to worry about. That boundary is healthy. That boundary is needed. You have responsibilities for yourself. 
if you overextend yourself, then you're just going to be pushing that responsibility off on someone else when you have to ask for help from someone else. So you are responsible for you, and any excess that you have, that can be shared with others. And when you share that with others, just have the confidence that it will come back to you in some way, and don't worry about how or when, just give freely. And for me, the harder part was receiving. I had a really hard time receiving kindness because my father had made me so suspicious, conditioned against receiving, because there was never just something for the sake of something. (laughs) You know, it came with some sort of obligation. And then also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, the people around me who were nice to me because they wanted something, that was also very nerve-wracking, right? So I never could trust if someone was nice to me what that meant, what they expected back. And so imagine my surprise when I grow up and I meet my wife and I'm almost 30 at this point and she's nice to me just to be nice to me and she doesn't expect anything back. I went through (laughs) so many emotional cycles just trying to figure out how to accept her love and kindness. It was a real emotional roller coaster for me to let that into my life because that was not my experience. I did not know what it meant. I definitely thought she must want something from me. And I really had to pay attention to what I was doing because anytime she would do something for me or give me something, I would catch myself rushing to figure out how to repay her in some way. Like I was keeping a scorecard. It was entirely on my end, right? I was the one in the red. It wasn't that she owed me. It's like in my mind, I made it up that I owed her and I needed to do this oh my gosh, she gave me a dozen roses today. What grand and amazing thing can I give her next to prove that we're equal, to prove that I'm worthy, that I'm not the slacker in this relationship? You know, that's what my father's conditioning had taught me over time. I would always try to make my gift just as good or better than hers, but for her, all that seemed like was some one-upmanship, right? (laughs) You give me 12 flowers, I give you 25, you know? And so to her, she's like, what is going on here? Is she trying to show me up? She didn't understand in the beginning that it was my insecurity that was coming through. It was me feeling like I can't just accept something and say, God, this is beautiful. Thank you. And not feel this crushing obligation to repay it. So be mindful if you have a background like mine and anytime someone is kind to you and you find yourself rushing to prove that you can pay that debt, there's some work to be done there for you because it's not a debt. And it took me a really long time to learn that. It is not a debt when someone is nice to you, just accept it and say thank you. And if you can do something for them nice in the future, do it. But there's no need to prove anything in that act of kindness. Just do it because you can and you want to because an opportunity presents itself. That's it. And it can be really difficult to know that if you've got any of these kindness blocks that are holding you back or that's part of your personal narrative, your history. It can be really hard to just accept love and care and kindness (laughs) if that's just not your history. And so being mindful of the things that might be coming up for you when you try to be kind and share with other people and also when they're trying to be kind and sharing with you, working to destroy those narratives. But there are three other areas of kindness where I've had to do a lot of work. One was being kind toward people I don't like. One was being kind even when I was uncomfortable. And then the third was being kind toward myself. So I'll say a little bit about each one. Kindness toward people I don't like, that was challenging because I had a very strong front growing up. Because I came from such a chaotic and volatile background, I would often encounter situations where I guess we could say I was triggered or I was, let's say, off-put by a person's behavior. Because now as an adult, I know that if a person is acting a certain way or if they think a certain thing or they say a certain thing, it's because of who they are. It's a reflection of where they're at emotionally or mentally. It's a reflection of what they're struggling with. It has nothing to do with me, right? But as a younger person, I didn't understand that. And so I would be in these situations and maybe someone would say something terrible or someone would be an asshole or someone would do something I didn't like. And my reaction was to be like the people who raised me, which was to come back really hard, (laughs) to have a really strong reaction in some way, either, you know, to sock it to them or to 
demand that you know they get out of my space or to say a mean thing back or whatever it was I was pressed in some way and I thought I had to assert my dominance (laughs) in the situation instead of recognizing that they're saying this they're doing this because of this is them struggling this is what them struggling looks like and I don't have to like it I don't have to feel comfortable around it, but it doesn't mean that I need to make the situation worse by being an asshole myself. You know, I can see this for what it is and I can just remove myself from the situation. It's like, oh, okay, this person is in a bad place or we're not going to mesh and uh, the best thing for me to do is to be kind simply by removing myself. Because sometimes kindness is not this overt act of of generosity, of doing something for someone else. Sometimes it's a very subtle gift of I'm going to not make this worse I'm going to exit stage left and you can have the space to do or be whatever you need to be and I will not be here throwing gasoline on the fire sometimes that is the kindest thing you can do I talk about this a little bit in why friendships end also if you want to go back and listen to the why friendships end episode again sometimes the kindest thing you can do is to walk away from someone if that's what the situation calls for So just being mindful that kindness is not always this overt act of generosity. Sometimes it's also removing yourself from a situation so that you don't make it worse. And then anyone who's ever tried to be kind toward themselves knows that kindness is strength. That was the most illuminating aspect of my own personal journey of realizing how much strength it takes to be nice to yourself if you don't love yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, or you don't think you're a great person. Being kind to yourself anyway because you are human and you are deserving of kindness. Just like you would be kind to people out in the world, even if you didn't know them, you would be respectful because they are human beings. I mean, most of us, not everyone, right? Of course, there are people in the world who are absolutely, completely convinced that every human being is trash. But most of us try to be respectful to other humans simply because they're other humans. And yet we do not afford that same regard for ourselves. Trying to be kind to yourself, even when you don't want to be, requires a lot of strength. And if you can work on being kind to yourself, even when you don't want to be, you will be building strength as you do that. Because again, it requires strength. And how do you build strength if you don't have the strength to start? Through practice. So if you struggle to be kind and generous toward yourself now, I definitely encourage you to find ways to work it into your day. Again, Don't be like my mom, giving everything of yourself to other people and saving nothing for yourself. That's one way to be kind to yourself. But other ways are simply giving yourself the same care and respect that you would give anyone. But also go beyond that. Give yourself love and kindness. And if you find yourself in difficult situations, recognize that you are in a difficult situation, that things are harder for yourself. Being kind to yourself in those moments. Being kind in the way you speak about yourself, being kind in the way you treat yourself, being kind in the way that you care for your body, that you invest in yourself and your time and your future. There are so many ways to be kind to yourself, and pretty much every episode (laughs) that I have had so far has touched on some aspect of how to be kind to yourself. Really, pick anything. Pick anything from this podcast, and I think you will find some aspect in which I'm trying to advocate that we be good to ourselves, that we learn how to rebuild that relationship to ourselves, to be kinder to ourselves. If you get nothing else out of today's episode, please take away this notion that you are as deserving of kindness as anybody, and to save some of that kindness for yourself. Do not give all of yourself to other people and do not close yourself off from receiving kindness from other people, which can be so loving and fulfilling just because you might have been raised to keep a scorecard. You do not owe anyone anything if they are kind to you and you do not have to give anything that you don't have to give. So if you take nothing else from today, please take that with you out into the world. And that's all I wanted to say about kindness today. I really hope that you found this useful. And I will be back next week with another episode of A Well-Cared-For Human. But until then, please take good care of you. This episode of A Well-Cared-For Human was written and produced by me, Corey Marie. The music was by Late Night Feeler and Esther Abrami. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider visiting my Patreon 
For as little as a dollar a month, you get early ad-free access to the episodes, as well as a monthly patrons-only Q&A, bonus videos, and more. Not to mention that your Patreon support lets me know that you find value in the show and want it to continue. You can find me on Patreon by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash Corey Marie. If you can't support the show financially, that is okay. You can still subscribe to the show, leave a review of the show, and recommend the show to your friends, not just the neurotic ones. All of this helps so much. And as always, thank you for listening.